yo yo what is going on what's going on yo um do me a favor i'm rusty as hell with this whole live stream um i know you all know i have not been on here in a while but do me a favor type five in the chat if you can see me fine and if you can hear me fine um i'm using a new software so I think I'm going to be using this going forward for a little while, but I just want to make sure you guys can uh, see me, hear me just fine. And then also have my, my chat panel on the side. I got my microphone. I got my lighting. You know, we're doing a little something. All right, there we go. Pam, what's going on, Pam? What's going on? Yeah, Eve, what's going on? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Tashara, Gwendolyn, what's going on? What's going on? All right, good, good, good. So, um... Let's have a good conversation tonight. Like I said, I've been, I've been, uh, took some time off a little bit. Um, but now it's, you know, definitely time to really get back into it. Actually, I didn't take time off. I was just off social media. Uh, but we're going to get right back into it. Um, first of all, before I get started, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? I know, uh, there's a lot going on. Um, things are very inter interesting. Uh, they're continuing to get more interesting by the day so um how's everybody doing how are you all handling the rapid changes i feel like i've been asking you this question for the longest now but it's literally been like a year and some months um that this whole thing has started uh and i, I want to make sure that you know we do our part over here to cover some of the the basics the fundamentals you know i i know it's very easy to go on and go off and focus on things that may not mean as much as the foundational things and so uh, when we tend to do those we we lose sight of what's real versus what's just glitter all right so what we're going to do tonight is kind of bring it back down uh to earth and really focus on the things that are extremely important have always been important and truly matter and will truly get you to the health that you want to have for yourself all right so i'm um, good good you say you're doing good i'm glad to hear that i'm glad to hear that what Pam, get out of here. Stop. Pam. Pam says she's 30 pounds lighter. That's what I'm talking about, sis. Yo, shout out to Pam. Pam uh, was in a part of our last challenge. Um, she was such an important member, such an important uh, tribe member in our, in our group. Um, you know, Pam was uh, very inspirational with her daily posting, her walking and, you know, doing the, uh, the live videos. Uh, we really appreciate her. Hopefully we see her back for the next challenge. Um, we'll talk about that later, but uh, shout out to Pam. Congratulations, sis. 30 pounds. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Congratulations. That's what I'm talking about. So once again, I'm using a new software. I'm going to be trying to uh, do some uh, screen sharing. Um, I want to talk to you all about a couple of things. So you see the title. You see the thumbnail. And um, let's go ahead and get into it. Let me actually pull up the title and thumbnail for myself all right there it goes so i don't know if y'all heard but um we're in the midst of a pandemic right but before this pandemic there was an epidemic and there were multiple epidemics that we were dealing with right obesity was definitely one uh it still is uh, type 2 diabetes heart disease high blood pressure and the foundation of all of those things, if you, as you've heard me say so many times before, is insulin resistance. Insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is the foundation for all of those things. Without insulin resistance, uh, the high blood pressure, the type 2 diabetes, the obesity, those things don't exist without insulin resistance for the most case, for most of us. All right. Uh, and unfortunately, when we look at the cases and the hospitalizations, the mortality, the morbidities, uh, people who are doing the worst, uh, unfortunately, with this virus that we're facing are those who unfortunately fall into those categories of having the comorbidities, uh, having the underlying conditions. And it's not like there's a small correlation. It's not that there's kind of a correlation. There is a direct correlation, a huge correlation. And so what we want to talk about uh, tonight is diabetes. I'm going to explain what that is, but I'm also going to explain to you the fact that what I'm going to going to go over with you tonight 
is something that we've known for a very, very long time. And I'll make it make more sense uh, soon, but we've known this for a very long time uh, about diabetes, diabetes, which is diabetes and obesity uh, combined um, in the face of pandemics. We've known this for a very long time. We we know what happens as it pertains to the medical community. So we're going to talk about that, okay? Um, so do me a favor. Make sure y'all share the video, uh, like the video, um, get help me get this out. Like I said, I've been off for a while, a little rusty, um, has some issues with the Facebook account, some issues with the Facebook account, but that looks like it's going to work out. Um, but I want to make sure we get this message out, and I want to make sure that we control the narrative as far as the conversation that we're having about this whole situation that we're dealing with. Okay. Uh, we don't want to like, once again, focus on the wrong thing. So, um, <clears throat> diabetes. Once again, diabetes is a mixture of diabetes type two and obesity. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to share my screen. I'm trying it right now. I'm going to share my screen with a uh, article, a relatively new article um, that just came out about back in June about diabetes, type 2 diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, insulin resistance in general, and how and why people who have those conditions do the worst when it comes to uh, coronavirus, but not just coronavirus, just viruses in general, bacteria just in general, pathogens just in general, uh, but really just uh, adversity as it pertains to health in general. Once again, we've always known this. And let me say this. Whenever I talk, whenever I have these conversations, whenever I make any video at all, any content that comes from HBAN, um, yes, we definitely make sure we point out the issues. We point out how we got to the point where we are. And that is important to understand how we got to this point. The reason why understanding the history of the problem is important is because we want to make sure that we utilize that history. We utilize uh, that path to come up with a logical conclusion, because if you don't know how you got to that point, as far as uh, being the most obese uh, country in the world or being uh, the most medicated country in the world, uh, type two diabetes, if you don't know how you got to that, uh, that, that part, then you could possibly come up with the, the with the wrong solution. You could come, come up with a solution where you say, okay, what we'll do is we'll just gather a bunch of money and then we'll give it to the healthcare system and then they'll help us out. That would be the wrong solution. It would be the wrong solution because that has not worked out so far. It hasn't worked out for us so far. So it's very important that we go through and we talk about the, the, the problems. We talk about the, uh, the history. But I want to make sure that we spend very little time on that and the majority of the time on the solutions and what we need to do as a community going forward to make sure that we eradicate and we radically we eradicate these conditions and we radically improve the health of our conditions because literally our future generations are de depending on us to actually do more action, uh, to take action, to, to improve our conditions so that we can improve their conditions so that they don't have to deal with this issue, issue when they grow up, okay? Um, so we can't spend too much time talking and complaining. We have to spend the majority of the time putting in the work. All right. So as long as we are all on the board with putting in the work and understanding why I'm pointing out the issues, it's so that we can get to the actual work and the solution. Okay. Um, so where was it going to go? All right. So screen share. All right. Y'all ready? Bear with me. I'm going to do a screen share. All right, so do me a favor. Let me know what you all see. Do you see a review article, um, COVID-19 and diabetes, understanding the interrelationship and risk for severe course? Do you all see that? Type five in the chat if you see that. Type five in the chat if you see that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop the link for you all because I'm fancy. I'm screen sharing, I got my comments right here. Watch this. Watch this. Boom. I just dropped that in the chat with y'all. Y'all want to read along. Give me like a bedtime story. All right. Boom. There we go. So um, 
you can read that at your leisure. But I want to um, highlight a couple of things, okay? So the whole point of this review, which was done uh, June 17th, 2021. So this is new, okay? This is new. Um, COVID has hit. We've seen how it has affected the world. We've seen how what it's done to our country, uh, people, X, Y, Z. It's been around for a whole year now, right? More than a year. So we have a lot of answers uh, to questions that we were not able to answer before. So essentially, um, <clears throat> you know, they start off with an introduction, um, you know, just a basic explaining mm -hmm. of uh, what diabetes is, type one versus type two. Uh, the majority of people who are type two diabetics. Um, if you have any questions by this point, for the most part, everyone uh, in my audience understands what type two diabetes is. If you have any questions about exactly what type two diabetes is or trying to understand the mechanism of it, uh, please let me know if you have any questions because what I will do is drop a video that will explain everything you need to know about type two diabetes, okay? So just let me know and I'll put that in the chat. So we're gonna skip past this part. And what I wanna get down to is this part right here. So risk of infection with COVID-19. Patients with diabetes are known to have an increased risk of infection. In particular, skin infections, uh, genital ur urinary tract infections, respiratory tract infections. So, right there, this is something that we've always known. All right, we've just a general, not so much COVID, but we've always known that people who are uh, type two diabetic, uh, pre-diabetic, or have high insulin levels are at risk of infections. Uh, and so, this is why it's very important to uh, to keep an eye on, you know, infections, whether it be a UTI, a tract, UTI, urinary tract infection, um, yeast infection, or even something as simple as hitting your toe on the corner of a wall and that toe possibly getting infected or ingrown toenail getting infected. So when it comes to uh, the, the condition of type 2 diabetes, infections can get out of hand if you don't uh, keep an eye on it. And so here's why. So the hyperglycemic environment present present in diabetes favors immune dysfunction through several pathways. I did a video a couple months ago, um, kind of going through exactly why high blood sugar decreases the immune response. Mm -hmm. I'm going to also uh, link that because I think that's going to do a better job of explaining why high blood sugar slows down the function of the immune system. But I'll go ahead and read this and I'll kind of explain a little bit. Um, the most important underlying mechanism are a decreased production in interleukins and in response to an infection, reduced chemotaxis uh, and, and phagocytic activity and emo, immobilization of polymorphic nuclear leuc leukocytes. So pretty much these are components of the uh, immune system. And when, when the blood sugar is high, they no longer function at the same rate that they were functioning in, in general. Uh, they're no longer able to uh, identify and locate pathogens at the same rate they were able to uh, with euglycemia, uh, euglycemia, normal blood sugar. And so hyperglycemia, including uh, resulting in glycosuria, also increases the violence of certain pathogens. Okay, so pretty much it's just saying that high blood sugar, when present, presents the perfect environment for an infection. It is hospitable, it's welcoming uh, to infections in general when your blood sugar is high. Now, what I'm hoping is that none of the, I'm hoping that none of this information is new to anyone in here. That, that's what I'm hoping, because if you are someone who is uh, diabetic or insulin resistant, I'm hoping that your practitioner already gave you a heads up that you have to be particularly careful. I'm hoping that this is not news, but I'm sure that it's, it is news for a lot of you. So um the next part I want to read is that, uh, let's see. So for SARS-CoV-2, uh, clinical reports from all around the world found diabetes mellitus to be one of the most common comorbidities present in patients with COVID-19. In the beginning, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the findings along with known increase for risk infections and other infections led to the assumption that patients with diabetes are at an increased risk, uh, primary risk of COVID-19 infection. However, most of these reports describe the patients in a hospitalized or even intensive care unit setting, i.e. patients with more severe course of the disease. So pretty much what they're saying is that in the beginning, <clears throat> although they were seeing that um, a lot of patients, uh, a lot of patients who were infected with COVID-19 were also diabetic, 
that wasn't the point. The point was that they were having more severe outcomes, uh, a more severe course over their time being hospitalized. And so even to the point where a lot of them were being uh, placed in the ICU. So I'm not going to read this part. I'm going to go down to this part. All right. So risk of severe co course of COVID-19. This is the part when, when I told you all that um, it's not new. I told you that it's not new that we understand the, uh, the impact that pandemics and viruses uh, have on those who are type 2 diabetic. I told you that this is not new. I'm going to show you right now that it's not new. During previous pandemics, I don't know if y'all remember, uh, numerous studies have shown that patients with diabetes are a key vulnerable group for a severe course of infection. During 2009, H1N1, how many of you remember that? I was in college. Um, I remember when it happened. I remember when it was coming through. And, uh, you know, we were shook. We were shook. Uh, but I, I, I was keeping a very close eye on it. And I definitely, uh, I particularly remember uh, the, the issues they were having with diabetic patients as far as this virus went. And I remember saying to myself that it's almost the same as the flu as far as uh, the, the, the issues that they're having because you can see the correlation as far as how they were doing with uh, the flu versus the H1N1. So anyways, uh, during the 2009 H1N1 influ influenza pandemic, hospitalization of individuals with diabetes were up to six times higher as compared to individuals without type 2 diabetes. Six times higher. Six times. Risk of admission to the intensive care unit was four times higher and risk of death was two times higher. So that was in 2009. Now check this out. In the first SARS COVID-2, well, I'm sorry, in the first SARS cov outbreak in 2002, 2002, diabetes was determined to be an independent risk factor for complications and death with an, with an odds ratio 3.0 for death in patients with diabetes. So once again, we know what happens or we know the, the risk for diabetics, people who are pre-diabetic or insulin resistance, uh, resistant during the time of pandemics. We know the risk. It's not, this is this was not anything new. So essentially, what I'm saying is that if your healthcare leaders were on their job, this could have been forecasted. We'll get into that later. Then I don't know if you all remember this one, but during the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, also known as MERS, uh, outbreak, the prevalence of diabetes with 51% in patients who had MERS. So uh, this is one that happened. Um, I don't remember the exact years, year for MERS, uh, but once again, the point of this all is that we've seen the effects before as pertains to uh, outbreaks, uh, pandemics, and how it affects pa patients of all demographics, um, but particularly those who are diabetic. Um, what I'm going to go through now, let me see. Actually, I won't spend too much more time on this because we're going to get to the solutions. And so this is just going through showing um, essentially how people who uh, who are dealing with high blood pressure, um, cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, obesity, how they're they're more likely to uh, have a severe case of uh, COVID and not do well overall. So I'm not going to continue reading all that. You guys have the link. Um, definitely feel free to go through and check that all out. But the point is that, you know, I say that your healthcare leaders, our healthcare leaders, has let us down. But, and I want you to understand, when I'm talking about healthcare, I'm not talking about the individuals. I'm not, I'm not talking about particularly... Uh, your doctor, your nurse practitioner, your PA, uh, the actual individual. I'm talking about the system, the system, because, you know, it was amazing. It's, it still is amazing to see the energy that's being poured out on such a uh, large level, a massive level right now in order to let me get this. Um, let me cancel out the screen share. You know, to see this outpouring of support. <clears throat> um, for this, uh, you know what it is, the shot. 
And to see that energy, I was like, wow, wow, you, you guys, you guys have that energy. Like you guys have the ability to push something that you really believe in when you believe it. If only we had done this before with the basics, because once again, obesity is an epidemic. Uh, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, these things are at epidemic proportions. And that's it's been that way for a very long time. So the fact that it has not been addressed in an aggressive way, way all the way back to, from 2002, where we knew what would happen. We have evidence. We've seen multiple pandemics come through. Uh, we've seen what would happen uh, to the vulnerable populations. We understood who were the vulnerable populations. That's why if you all go back to my very first post about COVID-19, um, you can go to my Instagram or you can go to my um, Facebook, I guess, where I did that whole hour video. I already knew what to tell you guys as far as how to take care of yourself or how to uh, pretty much protect yourself from this virus because I, I was 2009 was fresh in my mind. It was fresh in my mind as far as what this did to people who were insulin resistant. It was fresh. And so I, I knew about the vitamin D, the water, um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, fasting, of course, all those things, all those things were fresh in my mind. And that's why I laid out that plan. That's why I did that whole hour video. Um, that was like February 28th, I believe, or 27th uh, of last year when I did that video, letting you all know that, yeah, it's about to get tough. Um, the numbers are about to go up um, and it's going to be very confusing, but this is what you should focus on. And so over a whole, now I'm back again the next year and the advice and recommendations are the same. You see, we don't have to uh, make it complicated at all. We don't have to make this thing complicated at all. Uh, being healthy is really not that complicated. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's simple. It may not be easy because there's a lot of habit forming and breaking that has to be done. But as far as the actual information to improve your health is very straightforward and that's what we do in the challenge that we do with hbam and that's what i'm going to do right now tonight so if you um have that post that i did or if you just look in this description right now um it's a pretty good starting place as far as you know trying to figure out what what to do right now i'm just going to pull it up let's go uh that's me listening to me Everybody doing good? Type five in the chat. If y'all still with me, if you can still uh, see me and hear me, let me know. Let me know while I pull up this. Uh... All right, good, good, good. Okay. So, um, yeah, read the post. Um, but if you all are in the challenge, if you've been in the challenge or if you just been watching or, you know, watching the work for a while, then you pretty much already get the gist. Um, but knowing what to do is very different from actually doing it. OK, it's very different from doing it. And I think you have to kind of see the writing on the walls. Right now. We are in the midst of a paradigm shift where the world is trying to get you to believe or get you to let go of that old way of thinking as it pertains to health you know just let go of that idea of what you thought health was and move into this direction of believing that health is keeping certain metrics at a certain level and staying up to date with certain therapies and medications and injections and as long as these things are checked off that is health regardless of how you feel regardless of your results, as long as you're keeping these metrics in check and you're up to date on these therapies, that is health. Wash your hand, wear a mask, social distance, stay quarantined, check off this checklist, that is health. How you feel, the, the strange signs and symptoms that you're having, the, the stomach pain, uh, the, the, the brain fogginess, um, the fatigue, all those things, I don't know what we can do about it. Let's put a medication on it. They're working on shifting our thinking to believe that health is based on metrics. So as far as what I recommend, you know, once again, this is in the post. Here's what we need to do as far as uh, 
just to start just to start now of course if you join the challenge then we're going to hold your hand as much as possible as far as walking you down that path to improve your health but if you're someone who's brand new to all of this um, you're not really sure what's going on you just want to get started or you just read want to read more you're in the right place um, as long as you're ready to do the work so the first thing i recommend <laughs> which you know for, for a lot of people it's going to sound uh, aggressive but it's not and that's one of the things that i want to make sure that we work on um, adjusting our ideas of what's hard and our ideas of what's good and easy and bad so number one fast until you're truly hungry and or work your way up to 16 hours so many if you were to think about it real quick in the chat type five for yes you do this type six for no you don't do this how many of you all eat breakfast in the morning so in the morning i'm talking about before 10. how many of you all eat breakfast in the morning five if you eat breakfast in the morning uh six if you do not eat breakfast in the morning before 10. how many toya toya what's going on toya all right so we got a five we got a six let me know let me know all right, we got a six, we got a five, we got a six, we got a five, we got, okay, okay. All right, five, good, good, good. Now, and y'all keep keep it coming. So I'm gonna change the numbers up so I can know the difference between the questions that I asked. Out of everybody who just answered, how many of you are actually hungry in the morning? Like you, you wake up and before you eat or before you choose not to eat, how many of you actually feel true hunger? Like true hunger. I don't mean like I'm eating because it's eight o'clock. I don't mean I'm eating because I smell syrup. I smell pancakes. I smell, uh, you know, pop tart. I don't mean you're eating because of the stimulus. I mean like truly hungry. Type seven, if you truly are hungry. Type eight, if you're just, you're not hungry. Seven, if you truly are hungry when you eat breakfast in the morning. And if you, uh, and eight, if you are not hungry in the morning. Seven, if you're truly hungry in the morning. Eight, if you are not hungry in the morning. And by the morning, I'm talking about before 10. All right. So uh, Michael says seven. So you truly are hungry. Pam says eight, 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 eight. No hunger. I don't eight. All right. So that's a lot of eights. That is a lot of eights. So riddle me this, Batman. And I've asked, I've been doing this for seven years as far as asking this question. Well, seven years as far as just health in general. I've asked this question so many times, so many times. And overwhelmingly, people will tell you, you know, if I think about it, no, I'm not hungry. Most people are not hungry in the morning. Most people are not hungry in the morning. And there's a hormonal process that actually takes place in the morning that actually blunts your, uh, blunts your appetite. It's not even natural to feel truly hungry in the morning unless you are have done like a, a strenuous workout or you had a long night or something like that. But for the most of most of us, we're not truly hungry in the morning. And so that is that's the way it's always been. Once again, like bef between the hours of uh, there's something called a dawn phenomenon uh, between the hours of four to six, um, our body starts to secrete epinephrine, norepinephrine. Um, this is going to uh, release blood glucose from our liver. So the process of uh, gluconeogenesis or glyconeogenesis um, release glucose into our blood uh, bloodstream, which that in itself is going to serve as a meal for the body. Um, but also what it's going to do is the, the epinephrine nor epinephrine is going to kind of give you a burst or a jolt of energy uh, to start to get you uh, ready for the morning, to start to wake you up in the morning. In addition to that, that alone will also blunt your appetite that's going to decrease any appetite that you might have had and this is a very normal process that takes place for mo all of us for the most part now for people who who uh who are diabetics who are curious about why they always see their blood sugar higher in the morning than what it was um that night 
or higher in the morning and then slowly going down well it's because of the dawn phenomenon because once again your body literally provides itself with a meal in the morning by utilizing the glucose that was already stored in your liver and it puts it into the bloodstream that gets the, that gets into the bloodstream and then it blunts your your hunger so if most of us are not hungry in the morning how did breakfast become such a big thing how did how did the idea of breakfast being the most important meal of the day become such a big thing? And once again, if we're taking breakfast on its literal term, which is to break your fast, then yeah, you know, it's important, of course. But that can take place at any time during the day. So that's all marketing. As far as you needing to eat first thing in the morning, it's all marketing. And beautiful marketing from a strategy standpoint, not from a more ethical standpoint, because there was never any evidence to show that you need breakfast in the morning or that it's going to help you focus, truly focus in the morning. Try focusing while you're fasting and being used to that. See what happens. You tell you, let me know which one uh, makes you feel sharper, a stack of pancakes in the morning versus fasting in the morning and then going to take an exam. So, when I say when I when I when I make the advice, if you are someone new to fasting and you're already intimidated just by the sound of fasting and the idea of not having food, understand one one thing. One, you're already doing it. You're already fasting. All of you, everyone. When you lay down tonight, regardless of how long you sleep, four hours, six hours, eight hours, if you're like me, three hours. Um you're going without food you're going without food and so that alone is fasting fasting is abstaining from food and so you're already fasting if you woke up and well if, when you wake up and you check in with yourself and that's a problem as well you know we move so fast we got so many things going on we got so many st stimuli uh we're, we're checking our phones we're doing so many things uh and we're just locked in and programmed to wake up and do whatever we do. Some people wake up and go straight to the refrigerator, wake up and know that they got to eat this before they leave. But I want us all to slow it down, including myself, to slow it down. Wake up in the morning. Um, you know, some of you may want to give thanks to the fact that you woke up in the morning. Um, some of you may want to, you know, focus on what you have to do, um, you know, accomplish. Uh, there's multiple things that you, you may do in the morning, but I would definitely recommend slowing down, just slowing down. And I'm working on this for myself. But also along with that slowing down, before you reach for something to eat, ask yourself, am I really hungry? Like, do I truly feel hungry? Or am I just reaching for this because I'm supposed to or I'm supposed to eat it? Or ask, ask yourself that question. Because if the answer comes out, no, I'm not truly hungry, you now have to deal with this with, with yourself about what your goals are and how this applies to your goal. Because if you're eating just to eat and you know that you're not hungry, but you still choose to eat, you have to understand the results that comes along with that when you do it habitually. And most likely you will continue to do it habitually. But when you catch yourself eating, when you know you're not hungry, and you say, yo, this is this is crazy right now. I'm, I'm eating this Pop Tart, but I'm not I'm not hungry. Um, this is cognitive dissonance. You know, I'm not hungry. I know I'm not. But my actions are doing something completely different. I'm eating. Well, you just bringing yourself into the moment and making yourself aware of that. You now have the decision. Am I going to stop this? Am I going to work on this? And this is what I recommend you all do. Um, have that conversation with you, with yourself. So for those who are just starting out with fasting, you wake up in the morning. How many hours? What time did you go to sleep? What time did you have your last meal? How many hours have you been fasting so far? All right, cool. If you're not hungry, go to the next hour and see if you're hungry. If you're not hungry that, that hour, go to the next hour. If you're not hungry, then go to the next hour. Like there is no law. There is no rule that says you have to eat first thing in the morning. Seriously, that was all marketing. All marketing. There's no evidence, no science, no research. Um, well, unbiased research or research that wasn't funded by the actual Kellogg, uh, you know, all the, the Quaker. Those 
those folks funded the studies that have us eating in the morning. It's a game. It's a hustle. I mean, the guy who, who started the whole breakfast campaign, I can't remember his last name, but his first name is Edward. So, you know, his first name is Edward. Uh, he was friends with Kellogg's back in the day, uh, but it was all a game. It was all hype. So for those of you who are afraid of fasting, start slow, go to sleep, count your hours, wake up, check in with yourself. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Just keep on going. The next hour pass by, don't eat. Just keep on going. And so on and so forth. Work your way up to 12, to noon. If you can get to 12, 12, uh, 12 o'clock noon uh, without eating, yo, you're winning. I mean, but really, truly, if you could, if you were someone who was eating seven o'clock every morning and you got this eight o'clock, you're already winning. Now I just need you to do 830. And then if you get to 830, I need you to do nine o'clock because what you're doing is you are extending the amount of time that you're fasting and that you're without food and that you are now giving your body time to actually utilize the stored fuel that's already there. We already have stored fuel. We already have it. But we will never utilize it if we continuously bring in a constant flow of food. And that's what those folks, your, your, your healthcare system, has trained us to do. Eat around the clock. Six small meals. Three big meals, three little meals in between. Eat, 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 eat. If you understand insulin, you understand that that's a problem. If you understand insulin resistance, you understand that, man... It's almost as if they're working against you. It's almost as if your, your healthcare leaders have sold out to pharmaceutical companies, uh, to surgical centers, um, to device makers, to uh, device monitoring systems. Like it's almost like they sold out and seize you as a commodity that they will now advertise to these other bigger companies. That's what it almost seems like. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what it is, but truly, like, if you when you look at our rates when it comes to obesity, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, heart disease, when you look at our rates, when you look at how medicated we are as Americans, um, and then when you look at the trillions of dollars that we spend on healthcare, and then you look at the results, you couldn't do worse than that. Uh, even if you were trying to do worse than that, you couldn't do worse than that. And so that's why I say sometimes, yo, it looks like they sold out. It looks like the system of healthcare sold out its citizens. Because how do you spend all of this money each year to only get worse? Like you have an F minus as far as a grade goes. And I mean, I so I sat back and I, and I was I was just impressed and amazed by I mean, sarcastic, um, but it's a, impressed and amazed by just how fast uh, this, this vaccine was manufactured. I mean, just like that, man, just like that. And although, you know, nah, it's, it's not approved, but, you know, you got to do it one time, two times, three times, you know, might have to re up after that. Um, it's not approved yet, but believe the science. This is going to work. Bro, y'all struggling with diabetes. You're struggling with type 2 diabetes. Like you are still under the belief that type 2 diabetes is a chronic condition. You're still under the belief that type 2 diabetes is non-reversible. You're still under the belief that type 2 diabetes is just something that go, falls in your family. Like it just falls in your lap. And when you go to the guy himself, Self, the, the American Diabetic Association, not only will they tell you that it's chronic and progressive, meaning that you're always going to have it, um, you never can get rid of it, they're going to give you advice to make your diabetes worse. Once again, like I said, sometimes I wonder if these folks are working against you because that's, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't do worse if you were trying. You couldn't do much worse if you were trying, man. I mean, go on the ADA website, get, get some advice from them. Like they should be on the cutting edge. They should take that vaccine energy 
and pour it into type 2 diabetes. I mean, it's only an epidemic. It's only uh, more than 33% of your population. Like you should take that energy and pour it into the obesity epidemic that we're taking. I mean, it's only 42% of your population. It's only adversely affecting uh, those who have co coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, um, and increasing their mortality rates. So once again, you know, there was a lot of sarcasm as far as, you know, me saying that it almost seems like it, but come on, but come on. So that's why, you know, people always, I, I, I get asked a lot, particularly by doctors and people who are older than me, you know, oh, actually, I wouldn't say they're older than me, but people who may be a little naive to the system, they'll say, you know, why don't you do this? Or why don't you try to change this? Or this and this and that. You have to understand, like, I do what I do with the energy that I do it with because I truly believe in what I'm doing. But at the same time, I understand that they ain't going to do it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it until they find a way to profit off of it. Trust me, if there was a way for them to profit off of fasting, that's when they'll do it. Um, but if there's no money there, they're not going to do it. So it's not like I'm sitting here saying, you know, yeah, we got to find a way to convince these folks to uh, do better by us. Uh, you're crazy. It's not a flaw. It's a feature. It's not a flaw. It's a feature. It's not a mistake. It's calculated. Just think about it's a straight up ill pill bill system. It's a subscription system. Um, and so that's why, you know, I'm not a fan of all this flexing that they're doing right now and they have been doing, but particularly right now, I mean, just all of this talk about <laughs> just trust us, just trust us, bro. You're struggling with type two diabetes. You're struggling with uh, high blood pressure, all of these medications, all of these therapeutics, all of the injections, all of the procedures. And your diabetes rate is horrible. Your obesity rate is horrible. Sit down. So for those, once again, who are working to get started with fasting, that's what I recommend. Um, eat when you're hungry. Wake up in the morning. Don't jump to the bagel or the donut or whatever food. Uh, ask yourself. Tap in with yourself and check to see if you're truly hungry. Okay? If you're not hungry, don't eat. Now, if you are truly hungry, see if you can hold out for another 30 minutes. If you're just to the point where you just cannot hold out for another 30 minutes, whatever you do, don't break your fast with crap, okay? Do your best to get a green smoothie. If not a green smoothie, then do something in the, 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 the vegetable section, but you want to do a green smoothie. Like, just do it. Trust me. It's, you're going to thank me. Thank me later. All right. Uh, next, drink water only. So once again, uh, so let, you know, do what you do. All right. Do what you do. You know, talk about the shot. Don't talk about it. Like Y'all do with what you do as a medical system. But please don't leave out the fundamental things. Please don't leave it out. If you understand based on history, since 2002, uh, with the first coronavirus, COVID virus, um, with the influenza H1N1 in 2009, and then this one, if you already seen how high blood sugar negatively impacts uh, those who are infected, you should be on deck screaming from the top of your lungs, yo, chill out with the sodas, chill out with the juices. You don't want that smoke. Don't. Don't increase your blood sugar with soda and the juice because sodas and juices are literally diabetic fuel. If you want a cheat code to become diabetic, drink soda and juice. That's a cheat code. If anybody, if, if, if anybody wants to know, that is a cheat code. It's, it takes less work than chewing and eating food, um, digesting it. You don't have to digest it. You don't have to chew it. You just drink it and it just digests it, increase your blood sugar. Cheat code. So a very fast way to become uh, insulin resistant, pre-diabetic, and then diabetic. And with that being said, your leaders, our leaders, um, health leaders, 
along with all of the talk about mask and hand washing and distancing and you know all these things cool do that but don't miss out on the fundamental things which is drinking water you know that uh drinking water is it's a requirement for the body you know i'm working on um my next book I, I'm still working on the title, uh, but it's going to be something like the laws of health, like 10 laws of health. Um, and drinking water is a law for the body. When we're talking about laws, we're not talking about good ideas. We're not talking about suggestions. We're talking about laws. This is a requirement. You don't drink it. There's repercussions. Uh, these repercussions. So with laws, the judgment is already built in. You can be a good person. You can be a loving person. Um, you can have a whole team of people who just love and care for you. But if you don't abide by the laws of health that comes from nature and comes from your creator, then the law doesn't have to judge you. The judgment is already built in. Cramping, dehydration, fainting, palpitations, tachycardia. These are judgments already built in from uh, breaking the laws. And so there's multiple laws when it comes to health and drinking water is one of them. So once again, uh, the fact that this is not being screened from the top of everyone's lungs uh, in the healthcare system, as far as things you should be doing on a daily basis to improve your health, uh, in, increase your uh, immune system or boost your immune system. That's the word for today is boost it. Um, that's a problem as well. Because once again, just, just take a little bit of that vaccine energy and just pour it into like the, the food stuff. Like pour a little bit of that vaccine energy into the lifestyle style stuff. Just a little bit. Like all we need is 10%. Just give us 10% of that energy. I'm sure that 10% will be enough to catch a lot of people's eyes and ears. Because right now, I'm going to tell you, and y'all know I do this every day. I see patients every single day. I'm going to tell you, um, cognitive dissonance is real. Uh, delusion is real. Uh, you have many, 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 many people really believing that all you need to do is get the shot and you're going to be good. It's like everybody forgot about type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease, amputations, kidney disease, dialysis blindness gangrene it's like all of those things kind of just went away it's still there it's still there so we have to be like once again you have to focus on the basics and you know none of my advice and recommendations is going to be anything extreme or expensive it's not so water um when you're drinking that soda and juice it's diabetic fuel all right uh, even when it comes to like the juices that that brag, you know what I'm talking about with brag, where you have a bottle of juice and it says now made with real vitamin C now with 100 percent more zinc. That means your food is bragging. Your, your drink is bragging. If your food or drink can brag, run away. All right. Eat humble foods. Humble foods are foods that come no label. They naked. They're like, yo, take me as I am. I got this brown spot on me. Take me as I am. I'll tell you what, I'm healthy. I'm good for you. I got zinc, potassium, magnesium, calcium. I'm whole. You know, you over there dealing with them. Instagram. Let me stop. Um, but yeah, if your food and drinks have the ability to brag and talk about what they got, what they made with, you know, run, run from it. So water. Water is going to uh, radically help you out. Um, the sodas and the juices are just going to increase your blood sugar. All right. Next, my advice was uh, get sunlight or take vitamin D3. Vitamin D is not a vitamin, it is a hormone. You need hormone vitamin D3. All right. You need it. Once again, you can go all the way back on my timeline, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram, and you can see I've always been talking about vitamin D3, hormone D3, always. But when this pandemic started coming around, that's when I was like, yo, 
if this if this thing is as bad as what they're saying it is, and it starts hitting our community, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good. Because I know for a fact the majority, the majority of this country, the majority of the world is vitamin D3, uh, vitamin D deficient. The majority of the world. But when it comes to our community specifically, I mean, you talking about batting 85 to 95 percent being vitamin D3. Now, I will tell you that that is trained changed very fast um, over the year because of the awareness that's being brought about um, when it, as pertains to vitamin D. But vitamin D is extremely important. And so definitely, definitely do your best to get sunlight. If you're worried about, uh, you know, uh, burning, uh, sunburn or anything like that, uh, you can use coconut oil. Some people use shea butter. I do not recommend sunblock. I don't recommend any of those things. Um, you know, that's not my area. But if you're looking for something, it's going to be one of those things. Or right, fat-based, uh, fat-based oils such as shea butter, uh, coconut oil or um yeah there's something else but that's what i don't recommend for the most part but if you live in an area where you're not getting that much sun exposure which a lot of you are then you want to make sure you're taking a high quality d3 high quality vitamin d3 and so definitely shameless plug but um we definitely have vitamin d3 and as a gift when you join our challenge that we have coming up on september 13th the fast life 20 day challenge Everybody who joins is getting a free bottle. Well, if you join before the end of next week, join before the end of next week, you get a free bottle. I'll ship that out to you. Um, but please get sunlight. Take a high quality vitamin D3. OK, you need it. Um, if you don't have that, you're vulnerable. You know, for the most part, if you're not doing all of these things, you're vulnerable. But when it comes to D, when it comes to vitamin D, which is a hormone, being low in that it is impossible for you to have an optimal fight against anything anything it's impossible even when we take you out of adversity and we take you out of the conversation as far as viruses or infections go if you're vitamin d deficient it's impossible to to uh, operate at an optimal level so i guess this this is kind of like good news is that um if you find out you are vitamin D deficient and you've already done so much in life and you're at a pretty good position, well, start taking vitamin D, start getting some sunlight and then multiply what you've already done or what you're working on doing, because it's about to go up from there, especially if you add on fasting and everything else we talk about. Um, but pretty much what I'm saying is that you're not even able to really experience the full potential or the full weight that you have um, on the physio physiological level if you're deficient in vitamin D3. All right. So make sure y'all check that out. Somebody's asking, how do you join? No problem. So if you want to join us for the challenge, once again, you get a free body bottle when you join. I want to drop the link in the chat. All right. So that's the link. We start September 13th. Uh, early bird registration is open right now. And uh, all new members until next week will be getting a free bottle of the vitamin D3. All right. So next, exercise daily. We're designed to move. All right. Anything you don't use, you will lose. Okay. Um, that's muscle. That's language. That's the ability to think real fast or spell or, you know, anything. So we are designed to move. And when we, we, we don't move, our body starts to atrophy. Our body starts to... Uh, decondition decondition this includes our heart and so and this includes our muscle cells as well our veins our arteries all these things everything starts to degenerate degenerate um and so sitting and being still is the harbinger of death every day every day i want you all moving now of course when i'm talking about moving i don't just mean like you know walking to the refrigerator and then walking back to the couch like all right cool that's funny but that's not the movie I'm talking about. I'm talking about getting your heart rate up based on your level, your ability, okay? Increasing your heart rate, challenging yourself, sweating a little bit, but based on your level, okay? Not on anyone else's level or anyone else's idea of intensity, but based on yours, okay? So uh, this can be something as, as, as straightforward as you speed walking with 
weights in your hand or cans in your hand. Um, this could be something uh, as straightforward as you taking the stairs uh, several times at your office. So you're on a break. You got 15 minutes on the break. Or go up the stairs, go down the hallway, go down the stairs, and then do that twice. All right. And then do it at a pretty good pace where it is actually uh, pushing your heart to work out, to pump and get the blood flowing. We're designed to move. And when we don't do those things, then that's when you have the heavy breathing when you're trying to go up a uh, go up a flight of stairs. That's when you have the heavy breathing when you're trying to, you know, tie your shoes or you're trying to um, you got scared and you just jump back and if you're not using these things, you're going to lose it. I've seen people um, get injured because they were startled and it was a joke, but they were startled. And when they jump back, they jump back so fast for them at that point, but they were so off balance just in general, when they jump back to land, they didn't have the balance and then hit the wall, hit the floor and injury, nothing severe, but it could have been severe. Um, and that all comes from not using it. That all comes from not using it. We're not we're not designed to just sit and not move around all day, every day. So please uh, do your best to get in 30 to 45 minutes of purposeful exercise, uh, something that's going to get your heart rate up as well as uh, get you sweating. All right. Get the heart rate up. All right. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. Good, Maria. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm glad to see the family with families in here. What's going on? Ollie, what's going on, Ollie? Maria, Darlene, Toya, Pam. All right. Next, eat real whole foods. No ultra processed foods. The processed foods are also diabetic fuel. It will, once again, it will get that blood sugar right on up. All right. So, you know, once again, it shouldn't be some guy on Facebook telling you this stuff, man. Right after they tell you to wash your hands, wear a mask, and social distance, they should be telling you to drink water, uh, eat real whole foods, uh, get a salad, eat kale. These are the things that should be going along with all that information that they're telling you. All the information they're telling you about all the you know sites we have for the shot, and you know where you can do it, and how long you got to wait, and which one to get, and along with all of those things, somebody up there should have been saying you gotta eat healthy you gotta eat healthy i mean once again it's, it's almost it's almost like they don't believe the immune system exists unless you're talking about it in the context of the vaccine but outside of the context of the vaccine it's like healthy foods has no effects on the immune system because it doesn't exist unless you're injecting something in your body that's going to work on the immune system then it exists so i don't try to understand i just take it for what it is um but so okay so whole real whole foods these are foods that are these these are foods that are as close to their natural state as possible okay so the apple versus apple pie right Apple's not processed. Apple pie, you know, you, you went through multiple things to get the apple pie. A lot of processing had, had to go through, right? Um, and, you know, the list, the, the, I, the, the examples go on and on and on. Orange versus orange juice. Um, you know, kale versus, I don't know what else you want to do with kale. Uh, but pretty much we're talking about eating food for the, the most part that has been minim minimally processed. And that's why I say, you know, ultra processed. Um, because, yeah, you're going to have some food that's, you know, somewhat processed. So like black, black rice, I love black rice. It went through a processing, uh, it went through a processing process, uh, but not ultra process. That process was, it had to be, you had to get the, you have to get the whole off of it, even with brown rice. So, I mean, there's whole foods that had to go through some sort of uh, processing process. But I believe you all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that pasta uh, the white bread, the cereals, the pop tarts, uh, the donuts, uh, the Twinkies, uh, pancakes, syrups, like all those things are processed. They're all processed. And those things, when they break down your body, they're going to break down your body extremely fast. Um, it's going to increase inflammation. 
in addition to that, it's also going to uh, increase your glucose. And then the reason why I call processed foods uh, nutritional colonizers is because once again, when you think about colonizers, uh, when they when they land in territory, they do multiple things. You know, they're they're removing the people or enslaving the people, or they're doing something to the native people in that that area to get them out of the way, get them out of power. But they're also stripping the natural resources from that that land. So it might be you know diamond, oil, gold, like whatever the natural resources in that area, they're, they're stripping it. Like they're going to use it to sell it, whatever they're going to do. But processed foods has a very similar effect as well in the body. So once again, when we're talking about processed foods like donuts, cereal, or anything like that. Um, that food breaks down very fast because there's no, there's little to no any nutrients in that food. We're not, there's no fiber, which would slow it down. There's any vitamins and minerals that you find in there was actually added to it synthetically. Uh, in addition to that, when your body is trying to break that down, that's going to increase your blood sugar. It's going to make your blood sugar go sky high because it's breaking it down so hot, so fast, which is going to cause you to secrete a lot of insulin to try to get that down. However, high insulin levels, hyper hyperinsulinemia mixed with high, hyperglycemia, high blood sugar causes inflammation, which the body doesn't want. And so you have that that first campaign where it's attacking the, the the people where it's knocking off the people um the inflammation the high glucose the high insulin but then you have the second campaign where the body needs to deal with all this chaos that's going on and in order for the body to deal with this chaos that's going on it has the ability but that ability is found in the natural resources that the body has such as the magnesium the calcium potassium those minerals, uh, those vitamins, the vitamin Ds, hormone D, those are the natural resources that your body has designed to be pulled on in the time of adversity or the time of repairing to deal with the chaos. However, when that keeps happening, you keep eating processed food and pulling on your resources, and eating processed food and pulling on your resources, you're going to get to a point real soon where those nat natural resources are low because you're not bringing in any more natural resources. It would be different if you were bringing in natural resources, but for many people, they're not bringing in natural resources. And this is where you start to see uh, diseases pop up or so-called diseases pop up, which are really conditions. So that's why I call them nutritional colonizers, because uh, that's what they do. They colonize, they strip, they wreck, you know, cause havoc, all those things. So you want to eat whole foods. Whole foods are foods that actually have, they, they break down in your body slow. Gradual. Your body's used to it. Your body is very much aware of what whole foods are. Um, you know, whole foods, when you talk about like something just like what's this leaf of spinach or apple, you're talking about enzymes. Enzymes are designed to help break down the very food that you're bringing into your body. Um, it has, <clears throat> has the minerals, um, has the water already in it. It's obvious that you were designed to eat this thing, and this thing was designed to be broken down in your way in a very in a very uh, calm manner, in a very calm manner, um, in a very helpful manner because of the enzymes, the, the fiber, uh, the, the nutrients that you're getting from it, reciprocity, my eye, like all that has taken place and is providing you with so much. So that's what whole foods will do versus what nutritional colonizers, processed foods will do. All right. So don't eat the uh, diabetic food. All right, so the next thing I put on here was uh, so social distancing from naysayers and negative people is contagious. Yeah, so I mean, you all really already know. Um, seriously, you gotta get you gotta get you gotta get negative people up out of your space, man. You do. Them folks can make you sick. They literally can make you sick. You know, we as kids we used to say, "Yo, you you make me sick." I don't. I think most of y'all know just how true that is because um, I'm looking at my audience right now. Y'all already know. You already know how, how true it is. So people can definitely make you sick. Uh, people can definitely rub off on you as far as uh, their negative energy, their their perspective on, on things, the way they look at things. And they see, uh, you know, they see the bad in every single thing. They're complaining about every single thing. You're happy about something. You talk about it. Eh, they see the bad in it. 
And being around that constantly will start to affect your overall, your overall energy. It's going to affect you and it's going to start to bring you down and you being down affects your health in general. So I'm definitely not going to go too far into it. Um, but I think you all know exactly what I mean about making sure you also fast from negative people, fast from the naysayers, fast from people who say, you know, no, you can't do it. Uh, fast from people who are like, um, why would you try to do that when you can just take this medication? Like why uh, work that hard where you can just take this pill? Why do this where you can just get the shot? Like people who think like that and move like that, they're people you want to social social distance yourself from. People who want to always show you drama and beef on the internet, um, the gossip and all those things, you want to get that far away from you because it, it really does affect you and it takes you off of your path and your purpose. All right. And we can't get back time. So you want to be very careful about how you're allocating your time. All right. And um, what else did I say? You know, share this post with your family and friends. And then also, you know, we, we doing the, uh, the the hashtag. The hashtag is uh, hashtag flatten the diabetes curve. Let me post it in there. So let's see what we can do with this. You know, it's just something I'm trying, but um, start using that 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 uh, hashtag because I remember when this whole thing started, and it was all about you know seven days to flatten the curve, twenty one days to flatten the curve, and so on and so forth, and it was all about flattening the curve and you know all these diagrams with the the graph going up and what would happen if we flatten the curve and the hospital capacity. And um, that popped up in a conversation yesterday. And I was like, I said sarcastically, but then, you know, I was, took it serious right after I said it. I was like, yeah, they should put all the energy and flattening the diabetes curve. I was like, but yeah, no, seriously, like that energy should have went to that because once again, we already knew what happened. So it's on us. And I've been saying that over and over and over for the past seven years. It's on us, all right? You are the health leaders, especially you all who have already been in the group, who've already been in the challenge. You're part of the tribe. Salute. We appreciate you. Kathleen and I will be back. Um, you start seeing us both in the group real soon, like tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, but we're back, all right? Um, but it's on us to start making the changes and just start walking that walk. You be the light. You be the light for your, your household. You be the light for your neighborhood, your community, for your church, your job. You start walking that walk. You start putting in that putting in that work and understanding what you're doing and understanding why it's working and understanding uh, the results you're getting. People start to ask questions. And that's when you can share with them what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to overwhelm them. Um, it doesn't have to be too, too dramatic, but simp just make it simple that this is what I'm doing. And honestly, I believe you're worth it. If you, if you feel that way, if you don't feel like they're worth it, then y'all got some things to work on. Um, but the reason why you all who've been in the group, who've been a part of the family for, for a while now, the reason why you all have been doing this and the reason why anyone um, for the most part works on improving their health is because there's a level of them that believes that they're worth it. There's a, there's a part of them that's not happy with, their current status and believes that they're worth doing or having an, a, a different status more. And so you are worth it, but you have to make that decision. You know, I know we call uh, these, uh, these, these processed foods, you know, we like to say we like to treat ourselves, but once again, just think about what they've done to our thinking where we think about foods that we know are abusive to our cells. They're abusive to our cells. Inflammation, high insulin, high glucose, stripping it of the, in, the uh, magnesium, the calcium is literally abuse. But we think we're treating ourselves. And so this is this is where, you know, I really push back with the whole. I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, the body pandering movement. 
the pandering part because there's a lot of pandering that's going on because i'm a huge fan I'm, of course love yourself you can't you can't love anyone else until you love yourself like you just can't so you should definitely love yourself um but at the same time you have to make sure that what you're calling loving yourself is not lying to yourself right and not causing harm to yourself and i would also suggest that before you can love yourself you have to love yourselves because we are made up of roughly 37 to 60 something trillion cells we are literally a walking collection of cells and so to love yourself is really to love your cells how when you say you're treating yourself how does your cells feel about that treat you just took in hmm the soda the juices the donuts Krispy Kreme I know they're giving donuts out all year round you got a card but you're 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 eating it you're liking it it's good but your cells are like damn come on this again all right let's clean it up let's clean it up your cell sees it as abuse we see it as a treat a house divided cannot stand come on y'all it's too late at night right now for me to be doing this but a house divided if you're trying to go this way they're trying to go this way you're divided they want health you want to be treat treated divided the direction that you think you're trying to go it's not going to happen because you're working in opposition to yourselves so i hope that makes sense everybody um so i'm gonna wrap this up i appreciate you all for being here with me i'm gonna go through and read some uh, comments real quick uh remember we are starting up the uh the fast life 20 day challenge on september 13th registration is now open you can sign up right now early everyone who signs up early will be getting a free bottle of vitamin d3 um if you have any questions after we get off go ahead and type them in the chat pam says doc your take on bile acid supplements you have no gold butter and do you offer any i think yeah uh, pam i actually think that would be worth a, a try i think you should try it i don't have any I think we talked about this but um i don't have any but i think you should i think it's worth a try i think it's worth worth a try um yes they are using it correctly okay strawberry and lettuce with balsam balsamic vinegar yeah 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 i like that too okay good all right y'all well um i'm going to go ahead and hop off it's 10 30. i appreciate y'all rocking out with me um, please, like I said, make sure you uh, like the video, share the video, and also subscribe to my YouTube, all right, because I'm going to be heading over to YouTube. Let me see. Let me find this YouTube link. What is this? All right, hold on real quick. Let me copy and paste this uh, YouTube link, y'all. Do me a favor. Subscribe to the YouTube because um, I'm really working on being act active over there and I would have been over there tonight but this whole system wouldn't really link up with it all right so do me a favor subscribe to the YouTube channel uh share the YouTube channel with your family your friends the the, the video the challenge everything all right also please y'all don't get too sucked in to the media the news all right please don't get too sucked into all of it um don't walk around in fear uh, understand that there's so much more so much that we all can do as far as improving our health uh and walking around in power versus fear all right make sure y'all focus on those basic things we talked about you know you got to exercise you got to move every single day okay you got to drink water cut out the soda and juices um eat whole foods stay away from the processed foods um also uh vitamin d sunlight make sure you're doing that as well and then fasting fasting of course fasting and community community is very important all right so i appreciate y'all uh darlene says what are your views on diabetes medicine and pregnancy do you think it causes migraine 
miscarriages. So, Darlene, I will be honest with you. Of course, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know about the miscarriages part. I do have an issue with uh, really medications in general when it comes to these chronic conditions because, um, you know, they don't do what we, what we were told that they do. Uh, but as far as miscarriages, I really don't know. I really don't know. I know when it comes to the sulfon and ureas, the uh, glipizides, the glimepirides, the glabarides, uh, those medications, I know they have black box warnings over in the UK, I believe. So I'm not sure if you're in any of those medications. Um, I know those medications um, were pulled off the market in some places because of pancreatic cancer. And if you think about how the medication works, you can kind of see how pancreatic cancer uh, will be an issue for those medications. I mean, they literally force the pancreas to do something that it doesn't want to do. And it forces the pancreas to do this over and over and over. So uh, they've seen a, a decent amount of uh, pancreatic cancer while taking those sulfonylureas. So um, as far as miscarriages go, that's a very, that's a very, um, that's a deep conversation as far as what could cause miscarriages. And I'm going to tell you why I said that. Yesterday, I accidentally went down a rabbit hole. Accident. Accident. How did it happen? Um, me and this other doctor were talking about, uh, all right, y'all don't get too carried away. But this, uh, this, myself and this doctor, we were talking about U.S. government experiments on their citizens. Just experiments in general. This could be uh, chemical experience, uh, experiments, experiments, uh, medical, pharmaceutical experiments. The list goes on and on and on. And um, yo, it, I mean, I know, I knew, I knew a decent amount about certain experiments that has taken place in this country, uh, particularly when it as it pertains to African Americans. Of course, I have my book, Medical Apartheid. But um, this was heavy. What I was reading was heavy. And, you know, it's, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to wrap your head around how humans could do that. But they do it. They've, they've done it. And um, the reason why I bring up miscarriages is because um, one of the things that we were reading, and this was new to both of us, uh, was actual university professors and doctors doing certain things to the water and administering medications. Uh, I think it was like synthetic uh, estrogen, estrogen medications, as well as certain additives to water to see how it would affect pregnant mothers. And you would think that would be the last population uh, that anyone would exper experiment with. Not these folks. So, um, you know, there's just so many things that goes along with uh, miscarriages and so many things that could be a, a factor. I really don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, but I would say do more research on it. You know, do more research. Uh, also, you know, the health status. OK, you asked because your daughter is diabetic and she has had. OK, so <clears throat> now. Yes, diabetic uh, women who are diabetic uh, have a higher have higher complications as it comes to uh, pregnancy. And what I've told people uh, in the past, and women that I work with, and women that I work with accidentally, as far as pregnancy goes, um, was they really have to create the environment first, which is to improve the whole diabetes status as much as possible. Meaning that if your A1C is a 9.6, you want to get that down. You want to get that down as much as possible. And on that journey to getting it down, you want to be uh, creating a very hospitable environment for a baby, uh, eating uh, lots of plant-based fats. So avocados uh, would be number one on the list. Um, really replenishing your body with uh, a lot of electrolytes. Uh, definitely getting moving. So definitely pretty much everything that we're talking about. Definitely making sure that your vitamin D is where it needs to be. Uh, getting the insulin levels down because a lot of times and you know i don't know if you know this or not or, or, or she knows or she's aware but 
among women who have uh, type 2 diabetes, PCOS is also very common as well, polycystic ovarian, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And even with PCOS, some women can still get pregnant. Uh, but even with that pregnancy, it, it can make it very difficult. And so that PCOS may not have been diagnosed um, in some women, and then they find out that they're having difficulty with getting pregnant. And the PCOS has a whole lot to do with it. As, as pertains to PCOS, um, that's something that can be reversed with fasting. And that's something we talk about and deal with in the challenge as well, too. So there's multiple things. What I would, what I would start with you, here, boom, I'll just link you to the channel. So real quick, let me know, um, do you know anything about our PCOS status? Yes or no? If you do, then I have a video on PCOS she can check out or you can check out for her. Because if that's the uh, issue, let me um, just get this link. There you go. No, she doesn't or no, you don't know. So that's the, um, and then let me post a link for uh, insulin resistance explained. Definitely a video I recommend everybody watch if you have questions about, you know, type two diabetes. And this is a very good video, very informative. All right. Um, <clears throat> read, they were her property, next stock. They were her property, huh? All right. Uh, read, right, that's what I told her. She has to get health control. Yeah, you gotta create that environment first. She has a daughter already before she was diagnosed. Okay. Um, Marsha. Oh, look at that. Y'all see what I just did? Marsha, you in the big screen. So if I click on y'all links, if I click on y'all stuff, wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, uh, look at Pam. You, you, you just killing it in that picture, Pam. All right, y'all forgive me. Um, y'all forgive me. I'm playing with this. I didn't know I could do that. That's pretty cool. Uh, hold on real quick, Marsha. Let me check something out real quick because I just read something about that. Let's read something about that. <sighs> Marsha, right now, I would say I don't know. A big part, I don't think a big part, but I, at the same time, I don't know. But I just read something about uh, that as it pertains to, to type 2 diabetes. And as it pertains to testosterone. Also, uh, ladies, if you have men in your life who needs help getting going again, getting back in shape, getting healthy, uh, increasing their testosterone, um, you know, just getting that fire back, please send them over to the YouTube channel. Please send them over to the videos because um, I started making more uh, men content, man content, <laughs> uh, content for men, um, because um, I'm finding out a lot of new things uh, that uh, it needs to be addressed. So I'll continue to do the content the way I'm doing it, uh, but I'm also making specific videos for men as pertains to you know erectile dysfunction, testosterone, uh, HGH, and uh, really becoming that higher version of themselves that they should be. Or I we recommend them coming. Okay. Did you send a link to sign up for the fast? Yes, I'll send it again. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and get off after this, okay? So, um, like I said, I appreciate you all. Definitely, you know, check out the links that I posted. Check out the videos that I posted. Uh, we start the challenge September 13th, so you'd have some time. But once again, uh, up until next week, we're giving away free vitamin D3. So, I appreciate you all. Share the video. Make sure you remember we talked about the fasting, whole foods, exercise, vitamin D3, water, and just getting negative people away from you. Make sure you focus on those things. Uh, please don't get sucked into the media, social media. Don't let those things dominate your thinking. Um, get outside, walk around, uh, put yourself in nature because that's real. 
you know, like just go watch some trees and some squirrels. Like those are real things. Um, but don't get overwhelmed. OK. All right. So I appreciate you all. I love you all. And like I can always say this is our community, our responsibility. We have what it takes. We just got to put in the work. All right. Peace.